Hello Aquarius. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. We start today with this butterfly's garden. And it's so, so interesting, this card. Because she, she seems to both know and not know that there's a butterfly on her head. On the one hand, she's sort of gazing dreamily off. She doesn't seem entirely present. But there's some part of her that knows that she, to offer the butterfly the flower. The, the mystic part of her, the part that sees the wider self and the heart, which are always in communication and always in communication with the all that is. It's that conscious self, the kind of daily mind self that doesn't realize that the butterfly is up there. That the answer to the question is already present. And the second card, not surprisingly, is insight. Here with the crow knowing that if he adds a bunch of stones, the water will rise for him and he'll be able to drink it. And yet, I want to say that that's, that's actually the problem. That this is actually representing kind of that daily mind, the mind that has gotten used to things being a certain way. The, the mind that discounts mystery and magic, that looks for the logical answer, that looks for the reasonable solution. You know, I, I know some people that are always presenting um, research and articles that people are doing that they say proves these spiritual concepts that we talk about. And I understand this, I absolutely do. I grew up as a kid in a very, um, I guess, materialist way. Um, I thought of myself as an atheist for the whole first 30 odd years of my life. And so I understand that having proof seems really good. That if we have some sort of proof, then, you know, A, it'll be easier for us to accept and to create change in our life. And also that we can present this proof to other people and they will see and the whole world will get better. And I think there is value in this. And I certainly think there's value in, in people doing research, especially if they enjoy it. If they find it expansive and interesting. 
But I think that we can get caught up in that. And maybe, maybe you've been looking for proof or you've been looking for the reasonable path towards something. The underlying card here is the three of feathers, the three of air. And there you are, waiting to make a move or possibly waiting for something to occur. And maybe, and I think it's a little bit the, the two of, uh, the two of air comes out underneath. So I think you are, that you are waiting, if you are waiting for something to happen or something to, to show up, it is in order to make a move or to make a choice. And I think you've been, you've been searching for the answer and the answer exists, but perhaps not in the way that you've been going about things or in the way that you expect it to be. First card out is your card traditionally the star. And this frog is leaping, leaping up, trying to reach the star. Seeking, working, efforting, leaping to try and reach the star. As you, I think, have been efforting in some way. I don't think this is a lot of physical effort that's happening. There is, I mean, there is, we'll see later, some, some aspect of the tangible world that is involved in this. It isn't solely a mental concept that you're trying to figure out. But that's the, that's kind of where the real um, holdup is happening. Because of all this efforting. The opposite of that is the arrival, right? This is the eight of fire and all of these flowers just falling onto this little squirrel, just arriving. Squirrel is not efforting. And then the sun, that expansive, brilliant clarity, the ability to see in all directions. And here there is this, this image of, of this mother bird feeding her young. And the sense of expectancy of the, the certainty that this feeding will arrive, the certainty that this clarity will arrive. But you may need to release yourself from kind of logical expectation, right? We have this four of discs, four of pentacles, This kind of logical idea that you have earth and you have growth and then you have the flower. 
and this frog who to me today looks stuck. Right? He's extended his tongue, it's touching here, and it's as if he's part of all of this. As if he's made himself a part of this process. And he doesn't seem to be able to disentangle himself from this. And so we get the two of us. This card of uh, balancing resources, of keeping plates spinning in the air. Also choosing, you know, which, which thing to prioritize, which thing to focus on. And then you reappear again. You make several appearances here in various places. King of Air. And this King of Air, the, the Ace of Air, is actually right underneath. And then the High Priestess. So this King of Air not only has his own wing, but he also has a winged horse that he can take to see the priestess when he needs to. So that you have abilities that maybe you don't even realize you have because you, you're, you're stuck in this um, material-based view of how things work. So you have wishes, Nine of Cups, you have desires. Whatever this, they, they may be material desires, they may be um, emotional desires, uh, you know, even material desires, they have usually, if they're really kind of deep desires, they've got an emotional base. I want to feel this way. Um, I want to have, uh, I want to have ease, I want to have peace. I want to have understanding and clarity and knowing and communion. There's all of this. this beautiful six of fire uh, kind of energy lifting off, flying up into the stratosphere. Freedom, victory, success, uh, vision, creativity. But you're not really feeling it, you're sort of feeling this. That you, right, you've got your, you've got your lantern. You know what it is you want, but you're not going anywhere. There's a, a sense of this, this girl that's on the back of the, um, the giraffe always looks a little dejected to me. Like she can't quite, you know, get herself going that it's going to, then it's going to require some real effort to get this giraffe to go. And then we have this Ten of Fire, the Ten of Wands. So many things that have to be done. So many steps before you can achieve what it is that you want. All of these various things that have to be put into place. And it may feel kind of insurmountable or like you can't see how all of these things could possibly happen. And then we get the Four of Pentacles again. And underneath this time is the Oppression card. which is actually, interestingly, the tower 
in this deck, not the devil. The devil in this deck is temptation. But this is oppression. So the tower as a weight. And underneath the tower, the moon, the unknown. And maybe, you know, some of this, of course, is because there's stuff we don't talk about in our society. I think people have mystical experiences and amazing synchronicities and all sorts of things happening. But they don't talk about it. You know, <laughs> this makes me think of a, a Rupert Sheldrake talk if you know him. Uh, he is a, a biologist and a maverick. And he's written, one of the books that he's written about is uh, called Dogs Who Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home. And because he is a scientist, he's actually run experiments where he, you know, puts a camera in a house with a dog and then has the owner return, you know, over the course of a number of days randomly. Right? Not at a time they normally come home, not in the vehicle or however it is they usually come home, and then seeing what the dog does. And very often, the dog will go and wait at the door before the owner comes home without any, you know, previous knowledge, right? So the dogs know. And when he talks about this to scientists, you know, it, you know, as a lecturer, there's lots of poo-pooing of this. But then later, you know, maybe during a break in the conference when everybody's, you know, getting their coffee and pastry during the break, these same scientists will come up to him and say, oh, you know, my dog. <laughs> so <laughs> these experiences happen, but we've you know, we've relegated them to this alternative space. Things we can't talk about. And so sometimes we can block this off even in our own mind. Well, that can't possibly happen. You know, there's no mechanism by which that could happen. Or it would take, you know, all of these different things lining up before that would happen. And that is the, you know, this, this silence that we've created in, in our society to not talk about the, the mystical and the magical. Um, I didn't learn until I was in my 40s that my mother knew would know if someone, you know, a friend or a relative had passed away before anybody told her. <laughs> and I never knew that as a kid. But, you know, would I have believed it? I don't know. Because we have this, right, this four of pentacles, this attachment to the material, to believing that things have to happen in a particular order, that Newtonian physics, and even to some extent, quantum physics, a little bit, right? That things have to happen in some measurable or seeable or, you know, in some way that an experiment will reveal. that there has to be proof. You know, that stories are just that. And so we're stuck with that, mired in it. And that's sad. <laughs> this Queen of Cups, 
this queen of cups that always looks really sad to me. And she is in this deck, she's Guinevere, who's got all sorts of troubles. <laughs> um, some of them of her own making. But here today, she's looking at this structure that's in her mind. She's imagined whatever this is. She's imagined this, uh, this project, this life, this thing that she wants. And she is, you know, kind of on the verge of tears because she thinks it can't come to be. She can't figure out how to get from here to there. It doesn't, right? It seems impossible. And it seems, you know, either it's impossible or there's just too many things that have to happen and she doesn't even know where to begin. But help is on the way. And I think I mean, this may, this may be a transit for you, perhaps. This may have to do with this Venus retrograde that's across the way in Leo. Um, perhaps coming into a whole new relationship with the physical world, with all of those Venusian things, and with things that you value, and with how you see creativity and what is possible in a creative way, how creation happens. And then with Uranus, he's about to retrograde in Taurus, square your sign of Aquarius. Um, it could be that he's going to square your placement or just, right, just this energy of Uranus squaring Aquarius. Challenging challenging preconceived notions. And while Aquarius has this Uranian feeling, this um, insight, this innovation, it can also get stuck. Aquarius can get stuck. Um, analysis paralysis, being too much in the head, um, being mired by what you know, evidence has come before. You know, what evidence is there? The mind, the brain, wanting evidence. So this energy of air, this princess of swords, showing up to challenge the queen. Right, the queen in, in this uh, deck, at least today, looks a little severe. She looks like she's frowning a little bit. But this princess is quite calm. She doesn't even have her sword up. She's come. She's come to challenge this queen. Right? And I see her this princess as this butterfly sitting on your head. You maybe you haven't seen it yet. Maybe this, this insight, the real insight, maybe, right, that somebody, you know, this, this crow is gonna do this stuff and then a different crow is gonna show up and drink the water. Not having done any of the efforting at all. So this, this butterfly suddenly seeing, I don't know, maybe you, right, you pass a mirror and go, oh, hey, there's a butterfly on my head. But you have been quietly 
subconsciously feeding this butterfly, keeping it alive. And it shows up here in this Four of Cups, which is a much more peaceful Four of Cups than usual. Right? This, this person is taking a quiet moment. And I sort of imagine her just sitting there quietly while these cups fill with nectar. That she's in there dreaming her way, imagining her way, storytelling her way. with that waning Hecate's bow moon behind her. The unknown, the mystical. Coming into being. Twelfth house. Not a surprise. Now this says introspection, but the twelfth house is of course, so much more than that. It's all of the hidden things. Um, that we don't see initially. That we have to grow into seeing. We have to have experiences. And then it, the twelfth house is revealed to us. the our right our subconscious thoughts that part of us the wider self that has been feeding the butterfly um, how we fit into the kind of group consciousness that's going on both how we fit in and how we can step out of that how we can move out how we can begin a new story and then insert that into the group consciousness, right? How to create change. Inserting a new story into that universal human consciousness. You can certainly have a look in your 12th house. Um, see where the cusp is. Or maybe you have placements, planets there. Or points. And then Chiron, the healer. with the staff and the snake. This, you know, and what's interesting is the snake is sort of interesting. It does seem to be only one, but, you know, do we actually know that for a fact? There might be two here. We just don't see all the parts, perhaps. The mystery. The possibility that there is something unseen and unknown. And also that maybe, maybe you don't have to know. Maybe you don't actually need proof. Maybe it doesn't have to make um, logical sense, uh, you know, in a materialist way. Maybe there are times when you can just accept that something is, that something has occurred without trying to figure out why, without a need to know the exact process, that you can just accept these falling flowers and then of course Uranus. change.
passing through Taurus, how we see the physical world, how we interact with it. How do we interact with these pentacles? And there is also the fact that Pluto is going to be uh, returning to Aquarius in January. He does one more little dip into Capricorn next fall. And then um, at the end of November, he re-enters Aquarius and will stay there for 20 years until uh, 2044. So, you know, some of this may be preparation for that. For what will come into your life and into um, the lives of the collective. Uh, Aquarius does, <clears throat> is associated with the collective, with society, especially in an institutional sort of way, right? Because there is that Saturn element, you know, with the broader, with the broader society. So because Pluto creates transformation, that is, you know, what is yours to do during that process for you and for others? And this, um, this process of you releasing your hold on these pentacles may be preparation for things yet to come, as well as a way for you to, to get off your ice flow. So advice. Of course, the Wheel of Fortune, yes. And below that, the Hanged Man, yes. And then actually below that, um, the Knight of Wands, meeting up with the Knight of Pentacles. So this mutable Sagittarius energy. And then a mutable Earth, Virgo energy. Coming together in various and maybe mysterious ways. Ways that are unaccountable that are in fact magical. You know, and there may be an element for you um, not just of, you know, needing things to be logical and um, provable, but kind of an element of justice, perhaps, that things should be just that they should be, I don't know, equal. But it really doesn't, right? It might not work that way. Because we are all individuals, everybody's here doing different things. And not everybody may be interested in that. There may be times when things work out in a way that seems mad. You know, it may be that you make a mistake that actually, you know, makes things so much better for you or for someone else. when things get turned on their heads. Don't, I'm gonna say now, don't try and figure it out. Just go. <laughs> right, this, this princess sort of turning into, this page turning into the Knight of Swords Just take it and run. 
Take it and go. Who cares? Who cares really why it happened? That some magical thing occurred. Just go. And then you reappear again, King of Swords. Just, right, be clear on your own self. Don't try to figure out other people. Don't try to map out the whole process. Just get clear on what it is that you want. Get clear. Clear on your own self, on your own desires. Get clear on this Nine of Cups, this Six of Fire. Where is it that you want to go? Not because anybody told you you should, Not because there's proof that that path works and is open, but because that is where you want to go. Right? Where is it? Which direction do you want to come off of this ice flow? And then the Eight of Cups. So not only are you leaving stuff behind, that is unnecessary. You are moving towards something as well. And doing it by the light of the moon, by the light of this deep emotional self, this heart self, the heart self that has been feeding the butterfly. All of this time, your heart and soul have been feeding the butterfly, unbeknownst to your brain. But now the butterfly has become, is about to become visible. You're about to see the butterfly and the opening of possibility. Your ability to release these pentacles is arriving. So embrace that when it happens. Don't keep turning around and trying to keep a grip on the pentacles. Just go. Just go. I'm excited for you, Aquarius. I sort of wish I could be there when you right, see the butterfly on your head and come into that understanding. I wish you all the very, very best, Aquarius. And I will see you next time. So long. <laughs>